In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a more fancy one, a customized one, a more unique one. So to do that, we're not going to use the tube like we used last time. That was a quick and easy way to make rings to hold the bearings. But if we want to make a more customized shape, it can be better to use these cylinders. And the reason why is because this top cylinder here, as you see it's gray, that means it's a hole. So we can keep holes in place where we want them for the bearings and then custom build our frame around that. So the first step is to drag that hole out here. And we'll make it the same size as the bearing, which is 22 millimeters across and 7 millimeters thick. So we'll change these length and width dimensions to 22 by 22, and the height will make 7. Now we have a perfect hole for that bearing. Let's also make sure that we up the number of sides on it so that it makes it a smoother circle. Next step, we could either drag another cylinder out because we need to make a ring or some sort of frame around it to hold that bearing. Um, but instead of dragging the cylinder, it might be faster to duplicate this shape. And when you duplicate a hole, you can also make it a solid. Now you can choose any color you want for what it looks like on the screen, uh, because that doesn't affect the 3D printing. The 3D printing color is affected by whatever filament you have loaded into your 3D printer. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a color there, and you can see it's overlapped with the gray because it's the exact same size right now. Um, if I move that hole, we can see that it's the same dimensions. We're going to make this one... 26 by 26 so that it can be two millimeters wider all the way around in the diameter and then we can line them up there's a fast way to line up some of these objects if you select more than one object and click the align tool here it shows these little black dots which lets you line things up for example the middle on the side here and in the middle on the width will get it lined up centered perfectly in both directions now once you have a hole in the middle of a solid, you can select them both and group them together. And what that does is it cuts the hole out. So now we have a basic hole and we can do like we did before, duplicate, move it sideways until it overlaps and duplicate it again. And so you can see we have a very similar setup to the one we had last time. But there's a little difference here and this is what's going to allow us to customize this. If we select all these and ungroup them, we can see the holes appear again. When we do that, it allows us to create custom shapes around this spinner. So for example, I could delete that shape and that ring on the other side, and I could now create diamonds or some other pattern around it. If I wanted to create a diamond, for example, I would take a box. Again, we want to make it seven millimeters thick every, every time we make a shape. And I could rotate that box 45 degrees. And I accidentally moved the wrong shape there, that's why I had to undo it. And we'll need to scale it up to make sure that it fits in the side. Now if you hold on shift to scale it like I'm doing, it changes all the dimensions, so you'll need to change the thickness again at the end. Back to 7. Okay, so we have a shape on this side, a perfect diamond. And then we can duplicate that and make another one over here. And if we combine all these shapes now, you can see that Here's the whole design the idea, you could use hearts. So let's look at how we could use some different shapes here. If you pull out the heart shape, you'll see that it doesn't quite cover the hole. If we make the height the, the seven millimeters at all the thicknesses need to be, you'll see the hole is too big for that shape. So what we can do here is we can actually ch change the scale. And if you hold on shift, it'll scale all of it together. But if you do that, it's also going to scale the, the Z axis, the height. So you need to make sure that you change that to seven again. Or you can just drag and set both sides. Now, let's say I need to drag it out like I did to make the heart big enough. The problem is the hole is not centered. So if you're going to move the hole out from the middle here, here's the tricky part. You need to make sure you move the hole in a straight line and the hole on both sides need to move the same distance. If you only move one side, it will suddenly become lopsided. So if I wanted to move this hole out from the center here, all we do is we select it and hold on shift and start dragging it and it shows you down below the distance that it's moved. So we just moved that three millimeters out. Let's go ahead and make this heart a little bit bigger. Okay, so, and maybe we'll need to move this hole a little bit more, let's find out. It looks pretty good. So I moved that hole out three millimeters, so I need to take this hole and move it three millimeters the opposite direction. And you'll notice this is negative if you're moving a negative along the axis there. Now, if you want to keep the spinner pretty well balanced, when you do shapes on either side, you might want to um, flip the shape to make sure that it's the same amount of weight on either side. So I could take this shape, 
duplicate it, and you can mirror image it. Now what a mirror image does is it will flip it along one of the axes. So it will give you a little outline of what it looks like. And now I have opposite facing hearts. And if I select all this and group it together, you'll see that the holes get cut out. And I have a new fancy shape here. So that's how you can do more fancy spinner designs. Another thing you can consider is putting your initials on it. To do that, you click on the basic shapes here and change the text. And this is an easy way to find letters and numbers that you can place onto it, as long as you have space to put it on there. Um, if you make it too small, it may not work. Now, right now, it's not in position. We would have to move this shape up with a little um, black arrow on top of the object. will allow you to move it up, and then you can scale it in. And you can have this sticking out of the surface on top, or you can use that, that letter, make it a hole, and then you can combine it in. In fact, I'll put the M over here on this side. I'll put the G over there for my initials. Okay, let's do that. And if you're going to do it, you want to be a little bit more precise than I'm being right now. But you can always make it a hole instead of a part that sticks out, and in which case you would push it down into the shape. And then when you combine them, you'll see that get cut up. Of the object. Now you have a customized, unique fidget spinner, one of a kind in the world. In the next video, I'll show you how you can create an even fancier spinner to have a design such as this Batman logo, which really is just simple shapes like we did with notches cut out of it.